Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and sisters, I want to de dedicate this live session to those who don't have children and they are trying to have children from a long, long time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. May He bless you with the coolness of your eyes. Today, I actually want to reach out to those who don't have children because what they go through, very few people appreciate. Many people, alhamdulillah, they get married and a little while later, the wife is expecting and mashallah, they're excited, bundle of joy. Before you know it, mashallah, they have children. Uh, some decide to delay it slightly, which is not wrong actually, if you'd like to uh, hold on and not have children until the marriage has settled. There is nothing wrong with that. That reasoning is fine. It's fair. In fact, nowadays, a lot of people actually recommend that you don't have children as soon as you actually get married. You need to settle down a little bit because a lot of young kids are actually suffering and struggling uh, with parents who are divorced. So it's better that you, you settle down a little bit and then you have your children. So it's not a financial reason, but rather it is a reason that is something else. So you are allowed to do that. But we're talking about those whom when they would like to have children and unfortunately they're unable to have these children because the Almighty has not chosen it for them. Now, we need to understand we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We definitely do pray for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will keep trying. And don't stress about it. When it's right, it will happen. When we stress, we actually make matters worse. I remember speaking to a few specialists who told me that, you know, when people stress, it actually makes things worse. So let's try not to stress. But the onlooker, and that is you and I, who perhaps may be having children, walillahi alhamd, when we ask people, also, when are you having children? Do you know how dangerous that question is? That question is like you're just piercing a knife straight through the hearts and chests of some people at times, especially when they're trying to have children for many years and you make like it is in their hands to give children. And if they could, they would answer you saying, you know, <laughs> it, it's not in our hands or whatever. They might even answer you in a, in a little bit uh, of a harsh tone. But let's be sensitive. Don't pry into the people's lives and say, when are you having children? Come on, guys. You know, when you don't know the situation, they may not be able to conceive. And uh, we ask Allah to ease uh, the difficulty of those people. And over and above that, we ask Allah to bless them with offspring. So every time, for example, uh, they realize that we haven't conceived, it's actually painful. It's actually very painful. Sometimes it goes to the level of a slight depression but my sisters don't allow that to happen to you don't allow yourself to get to the point of depression because the almighty knows why he has delayed it and he also knows why if he chose not to give children to you why he is not going to give those children to you so sometimes he gives only boys and sometimes he gives only girls and sometimes he gives boys and girls meaning male and female children and sometimes he gives neither male nor female. That is the Almighty. He knows what is best. Always ask the Almighty to grant you what you wish, but understand that whatever he ultimately gives you was the best for you. There are people who've had children exactly as they wanted, and those children were uh, a means of their uh, sadness at some stage, either due to drugs, due to crimes, due to them dying very brutally in some way at a young age or in front of their parents and so on. When the Almighty knows you won't be able to handle all of that, He doesn't give them to you in the first place. So just be helpful, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to study the options, you may do so. So uh, fertility treatment is permissible uh, on condition that it is done as a last resort. And on top of that, you do have the IVF and so on, which has conditions within Islam. Uh, it needs to be number one, a last resort. Number two is between the husband and wife strictly, no third party involved. So uh, if the sperm count is low, for example, if there is something wrong with the conceiving, uh, you can actually have that uh, artificial fertilization of that particular, um, uh, of, of the couples, you know, the eggs and the sperm, but you cannot bring in a third party in Islam. You cannot bring in a third party, no matter who that third party is. So uh, even the growth of that, 
particular baby has to be, or the, the embryo, the fetus, has to be within the womb of the mother. Uh, it cannot be with a third party in Islam. I mean, others are doing this, but I'm talking of the Islamic rulings. So we need to be very careful how we address this matter. But you may try fertility and whatever else, and at a certain point you will realize that if Allah has not meant it to be, it won't. So don't become too depressed. You might want to study the option of taking care of orphans. Uh, you know, people call it adoption, but it's not absolute adoption. It is partial adoption in the sense that uh, we're bringing someone, they would know that we are their foster parents, so to speak, foster parents, which means we're looking after them and they would know that we love them equally and we're going to provide for them as best as we can, seeing that they were orphaned or perhaps from a war-torn place or something of that nature. And it would be also in, you know, good to go to an orphanage and take care of children and come back home. Uh, or make regular trips or reach out to children across the globe in whatever way you want and perhaps sometimes have a moment to go out and uh, you know spend time with the children who are underprivileged and so on so there is a lot that you could do sometimes the almighty has chosen you for something else for something higher uh, than what you thought you would have so some people dedicate their lives thereafter to a certain cause some people are able to use that energy, the, the, the resources given to them by the Almighty in a way that would actually, uh, you know, be more beneficial to everyone. So in this particular case, we need to realize that uh, not only should we be sensitive when we address people who don't have children, but even those who don't have children, let's not become too saddened by the, you know, what is going on, because at the end of the day, part of your iman is to believe in a good and bad fate being from the Almighty. So al qadar, which is fate, you know, the destiny, uh, it actually comes from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and we as mu'minin, as believers, should surrender to that and be happy with the decree of the Almighty. And this is this is uh, an extremely important point regarding iman, regarding the faith that we have. So, uh, subhanallah, I'm sitting here in Monrovia, Liberia, uh, and I'm, I'm addressing this issue because of so many people who have raised it with me, subhanallah. And uh, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that uh, when Allah has not given us one thing, a lot of the times He gives us other things. And if Allah were to give us that, perhaps we, we may not have had everything else that we do have. So always thank Allah for what He has given you, what He has bestowed upon you. Let's pray for those who don't have children, that Allah bless them with children. Uh, those who do have children and their children are actually... Uh, you know, engaged in something that might not be uh, the best of things. May Allah make it easy for us to take care of our children, to be a guide to them. Uh, it's not easy uh, to look after children nowadays. It's very, very challenging. You know, the schools we send our children to, what can happen and cannot happen, only Allah knows. Uh, many get into bad habits because of the company they keep. Uh, many lose their... Uh, you know, their faith sometimes because of the environment they're living in, the pressures that they have. Uh, sometimes we have the issue of uh, materialism that overtakes our own children. And as materialism overtakes our own children, sometimes uh, we tend, you know, to uh, turn a blind eye to their habits. Sometimes they begin to steal, they begin to, you know, do things that are unacceptable. They Perhaps, you know, just in order to have the latest handbag, the latest phone, uh, the latest something. So always try and address your children to explain to them that it's not a rat race. You know, we shouldn't be running behind things. The problem is the parents themselves at times run after things without realizing that their children are watching. You know, mom always wants the latest and the top and the best. And dad also always wants the latest and the top and the best. And then we tend to neglect the kids. And sometimes it's not a good idea to throw things at your children, uh, even if you can afford them, because who knows later on in life, they may be married into a system where they might not be able to uh, live up to that. And thereafter, it may result in turmoil, turbulence, or even divorce. 
boss. And we've seen it happening, where because you cannot live up to what your father kept you, uh, therefore there is stress in the marriage, you know. So have mercy on your children by uh, letting them earn what they have. And by when you provide for them, you know, uh, discipline them, encourage them to look at how other people are living. Make sure that they earn it somehow, whether it's through good deeds uh, or good character or the fulfillment of something that is a duty and an obligation. Uh, and you have the brownie points that will then result in you getting something once you've collected 10 or 20, depending on your system, in your home. A lot of us don't even have a system. You must be thinking, what's this guy talking about? But I'm talking about a system that you have for your children to deserve what you are going to give them, uh, just so that it can encourage them to, be, uh, to better themselves in a certain way. So my brothers and sisters, we're dedicating this session, as I said, to those who don't have children. And I want to dedicate it also to those who've lost their children. Because when someone loses a child, to be honest, it is very, very difficult for anyone to console them because they are the only ones who know what they feel, what they are feeling. They are the only ones who know what they are going through. It's not easy. Think about it. You've lost a child. May Allah grant you Jannah. And this is why if you lose a child and you actually uh, bear the sabr and the patience uh, in that uh, difficulty, the Almighty will definitely give you much higher, much better. He will even grant you Jannah to for those for you having been, uh, for you having actually uh, had the patience and the sabr that was required to go through this uh, uh, hardship and difficulty. So uh, I really reach out to those who've lost their children, who might have lost a few of their children. Uh, in some cases, I know of people who've lost more than one child. And it's very, very difficult for us to console them, to reach out to them. It's very difficult for us to even say a word. But we try. At the end of the day, we try. We can say a few words and uh, we can actually try and help them in every possible way. But they know what they're going through. And no matter what, there will always be a void right up to the end. There will always be an emptiness in the heart. And for that, you shall be rewarded. However, let's try not to, you know, uh, speak to people in a way that makes it seem that we've not gone, we've not come over uh, this issue. We need to engage in, and this applies for both categories of people we're addressing today, those who don't have children and those who've lost their children. You need to improve your relationship with Allah, not to say it's not good, but you need to do better. Myself included, we all can improve. But if you increase your adhkar and the remembrance of Allah, it will make it easier for you to go through the hardship that the Almighty has chosen for you. If you increase your, the, the, the quality of your salah, for example, the prayer that you have, you make your wudu, you enjoy your, your prayer with Allah, your time with Allah, it will help you go through the difficulties and the hardship. It will make things easy. If you go through the seerah and the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, truly it will make your life much easier because you go to see the best of creation who went through the loss of children and his wives all did not have children from him besides one of them. And that was Khadija. Khadija binti Khawalid radiallahu anha and sorry uh, if you excuse me uh, Maria al-Qibtiya as well had Ibrahim who passed away who passed away uh, in his infancy so he lost his children in adulthood he lost his children in infancy and he went through so much yet he was the most loved unto Allah similarly he was an orphan himself where he didn't have a father when he was born. His father had already predeceased him. His mother passed away a few years down the line. The uncle who was, the, the grandfather who was looking after him also died uh, two years later. And thereafter, his uncle looked after him. And as he grew older, uh, he lost his children. He lost some of his spouses and so on and so forth. So may the Almighty grant us a deep understanding. We go through this life and we read it. We will definitely be able to create ease within ourselves uh, from the Almighty and and it will help us go through our difficulty and hardship. Another very interesting factor that will help you is when you reach out to those who have less than you. When you reach out to those who are going through more hardship than yourself, greater hardship, greater difficulty. So you help the homeless, you might help the orphans, you help you reach out to people uh, who don't have much, you travel to a distant land in order to uh, be with physically people who are going through lots of hardship. When you come back, you realize, subhanAllah, in fact, when you're there, you realize Allah has blessed me. And like I said, when the Almighty takes one thing away from you, if you bear the correct sabr, He replaces 
that with so many other things that others don't have that you now have as a result of your sabr. So remember my, my beloved brothers and sisters, if Allah has tested you in one of these two ways, well, don't lose hope. It's the mercy of Allah. We pray for you that Allah bless you with offspring and that Allah grant you an, a, a, a soothing after the loss that you have struggled and suffered. Uh, I've known of people who've lost their children in a fire. I know of people who've lost their children in a motor vehicle accident when they were driving the car. And they, they sometimes don't forgive themselves. But you have to learn to make a dua to Allah, to seek forgiveness of Allah, to continue with life. That's life. Don't stop. You know, uh, there are so many examples we can actually give, but let me not give you examples because it's a very sensitive thing. It's something that uh, is, is not easy to speak about uh, when you've lost children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Uh, similarly, those who've lost their parents, uh, it might be a totally different topic. We may address it on a different uh, live session at some stage. But for now, I just want to say my brothers, my sisters, uh, let's be considerate. Let's think about those who have lost children, those who don't have children. And if, if you are one of those two categories, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, we reach out to you wholeheartedly. We pray for you. We ask the Almighty to grant you from His mercy. And uh, we, ask you to, we ask Him to bless you with Jannatul Firdaus for your sabr. And may we all uh, gather together with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah and thereafter. And may Allah forgive our shortcomings and grant us strength. Uh, I want to end with this from this beautiful city of Monrovia, Liberia. And I've come to you with this session. Inshallah, I'll post it up on YouTube for the benefit of the others. Uh, may Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.